Hello, I'm Jacob Thomas Fry. I'm from the Pueblo of Tesuki. I grew up on the Raymond Navajo Reservation in southwestern New Mexico. I'm a pottery builder. A lot of my influences came from uh, prehistoric pottery. Um, growing up um, hiking and growing up in and around the Four Corners region. So right now I'm just stretching out the clay. Ooh, there's lots of air bubbles in this clay. Sounds like Laffy Taffy. If I was pro, I could make a whole perfect circle but I'm not that pro yet. And you want to slip and score where you're going to be joining the Paxman's mouth. So right here where these two come together, I will push the pottery, or um, push the pottery together. And then with the palm of my hand, I will Lightly pat down the coil. And then with my rolling pin, this will um, protrude the, the air bubbles out. No air bubbles, so. And I'll just cut the edges. The one side of the coil will be joining the pottery and also the inside of the bowl or the base of the pottery. So the anatomy of a pottery is you have the base, um, you, have, you have the base or the foot of the pottery, you have the body, and you have the shoulder, and then you have the neck, and then the rip or the limb. So that's pretty much the anatomy of a pottery. You have the different stages. So you always want to slip first, and then you score. Will you be joining the two clay bodies together? And then I will overlap the coil about um, a quarter of an inch. And then where you join the two, or around the circumference of the the pookie, where it comes together, you will want to scratch and score there also, or scratch at least. So right now I'm just going to lightly take my thumb and ah. you don't want to work in, in one area too much, you just want to get it sealed. If there's any kind of dry clay, you don't want that to get in your clay. So I'll just do that. Now I'll do the. I'll work on the inside of the of the um, the pot. Um, so I'll use the curvature of the scraper with the curvature of the bowl. And what I'm doing is pushing those coils like really together, so there's no doubt that there is an air pocket in there. This first coil is one of the very, very important ones. Okay, so once I get to this point, the first couple of coils, I will start um, stretching um, the shoulder in to start creating the, the neck. So you got your shoulder and then you'll start with your neck. So I'm just, 
I'll use the pookie as a guide of where the shoulders should start coming in. You can use a paddle too to get it going. Looks a little bit sideways, but we'll just trim up the the rim and let it sit. But once I get it to this point, I will I'll let it sit for a few hours because the clay is a little bit wet to work with right now. And pottery is all about working in stages. You can't you can't work too fast or too slow. So. You gotta, once it starts telling you, once Mother Earth starts saying, hey, wait a little bit, man, then you'll be good. So, as you can tell, it's a little bit off, a little bit wet. So, you're trying to get to a point where it's a good um, shape and a form where it's um, leather hard, it's not dried all the way. that and then I'll also use the shape of the the scraper to do the neck if you can sit it like this in a pookie on its side but not too much you have to find the right one, but you, you'll clean the inside too. So this just helps remove excess weight instead of having this huge doorstop pottery, you can actually um, it just helps you, um, for, so once you get to sanding, um, you don't have all this um, clay you have to remove. So that's a really important part. Um, the next step all we'll be doing will be um, sanding. A lot of my designs are a mixture or a combination of um, prehistoric prehistoric designs from like um, from like Pueblo two to Pueblo um, four, and then um, in the more recent years, I've started to m practice more and more of the. Um, the Suki style polychromes from the 1800s. So it's kind of like a combination of those two. Um, design, design is kind of like your own way or own interpretation or vocabulary or language. 
that you um, create and um, you can just look at a design and say oh I want to do that design but um, I think every pottery is different it has its own personality so it's like having a song and then doing your same exact song you know I mean yeah there's cover songs but um, and it's like that with, with design work you have to have your own your own style and I'm not saying that um, using references is a bad thing but um, it's good to have your own it's, its own voice I, I'm I just think it's better to have um, looseness and have its variants because it gives it its own uh, language So once I do the, all the um, cousin lines, I'll start filling in um, with either darker lines or I'll go in with a, another color, like I could use red. Um, it just depends on whether you want it to be like a polychrome design or, or just like a positive negative design. So I'll just go ahead and start. And this is just a little bit too thick, so. When you're doing the filling part, you kind of want it a little bit watery. And that's just the first coat. So you'll do two to three coats, depending on how thick your first coat is. Um, but it's better to not have, it's better to layer it on in stages because if you just do one thick coat, it, it just looks like it's real, like it's not a part part of the clay body. It has to be a part of it. If it's just on top, it kind of looks funky. You can see here that it's rubbed off. So <clears throat> this will actually, like, you know, if you leave it outside, it's more decorative. It's not, um, it's not really like, for a thousand years, I guarantee this would wear off, but it becomes a positive and negative. So wherever you paint the beeweed, this, um, that will become the design wherever you didn't paint. 